Welcome to your Destiny Moment service. I want today to put an emphasis on this issue of deliverance. I know that for some people it's a controversial subject, but I want us to first of all look at the mission of Jesus Christ. Why did Jesus Christ come? In the book of Luke chapter 4, listen to verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Secondly, to heal the brokenhearted. Thirdly, to proclaim liberty to captives. Fourthly, the recovery of sight to the blind. And number four, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Now for me, this word to set at liberty, it's all about the mission of Jesus to bring deliverance in our lives. Now, deliverance simply means to set people free from bondages. Now, a bondage is a state of slavery. In other words, whatever has enslaved you, you need deliverance in that particular area. In the book of Luke, chapter 13, listen to verse 10. It talks about a woman who had been bent over double by a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. Jesus walks into this church or synagogue in verse 10. Listen. Now, he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. Now, as he's teaching in the congregation, he spots a woman who was bent double by a spirit. Now, her being bent double, that was a physical condition, but that it, was, it had been caused by a spirit. Now, listen to verse 16. So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day. In other words, this woman was physically bent double, and she could not raise herself up. Now, this was a physical condition, but to someone in the congregation today, it could be a financial situation. You are bent double in the area of finances. You have done all that you can. You can even be educated, but you cannot raise yourself up financially. It could be a marital situation. You've done all in your power, but you are still bent double. You cannot raise yourself up. Now, today I want us to look at how do devils torment people or enslave people? In the book of Luke 22 and verse 3, it talks about one of the 12 apostles. I'm talking about the original apostles of Jesus Christ. His name was Judas Iscariot. Listen to verse 3. Then Satan entered Judas Iscariot. This was one of the great apostles of Jesus Christ, but he had an open door and the devil entered him listen to job 3 25 for the thing i feared the most has overtaken me and what i dreaded has befallen me now we know that job was a righteous man but according to this verse job had fear in his heart as when the devil was walking around like a lion he spotted an open door called fear in the life of job and we'll see what happened thereafter. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given to us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And I'm praying for you today, if you're bound by a spirit of fear, fear of death, fear of aging, fear of not having enough, fear of witchcraft, fear of generational curses. I break that spirit of fear from your life in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray that God will clothe you with a spirit of power and love and a sound mind in Jesus' name. Now, First Peter chapter 5, listen what, what verse 7 says. Give all your worries to God for he cares for you. For he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil, for he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. That is the work of the devil 24 hours against our lives. He's always looking for an entry point into your life. But I want you to know that your deliverance begins by knowledge. 
the woman that had been bound by a devil for 18 long years, she did not receive a deliverance. The teaching of Jesus Christ came first. And when the teaching turned into an invitation, this woman's testimony has become a generational thing. Let me talk about how devils attack our lives. Most of the time, when people's guards are low, most of the time when we are at our weakest moments, we become vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. Let me talk about the emotional, so, emotional shock. Times when you are suffering loss, times of sadness, times when you feel like you are hopeless, you cannot cater for your family. You had a job, the job is gone. You've been looking for one for ages. Nothing has happened. If you're not careful, if you're not careful of your heart to guard, it, to guard your heart, the devil can always attack you when you are weak, when you are vulnerable. Let me talk about the negative prenatal influences. We've seen children that have a bondage of rejection simply because when their mothers conceived them, they did not like their pregnancy. Unborn, but because of the rejection of the parent, even before the child is born, a spirit of rejection can easily get hold of that person all throughout their lives. And so if you're a person who says that, well, pastor, pray for me, wherever I go, I'm rejected. That rejection, that spirit of rejection had an entry point in your life. Let me talk about the issue of pressure in early childhood. Children that have grown up in homes, homes that have had conflicts. Parents always arguing, parents always fighting against each other. Devotion, I mean divorce or separation. Those traumatic situations can cause a child to have an entry point in her life of a demonic, demonic power that can torment that child many, many times or throughout their lives until they come to Jesus Christ who can set them at liberty. Another entry point is false religions and the occult. I'm talking about witchcraft or people going into shrines to worship devils. Listen to the book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 to verse 5. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God, punishing, now listen, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. And I want you to know that all of us come from ancestors that did practice witchcraft or worshipped idols. Now God is saying here that he will follow up that particular family to the fourth generation. Oh, praise God. You may never have gone to a witch or to a shrine. You may never have sacrificed an idol. But if there was someone to the fourth generation behind you who did practice witchcraft, I want you to know that was a big open door that can torment people in that particular families. Another way the devil enters is when people have deliberate acts of sinfulness. You know, the devil feeds on sin. When you deliberately live a life that is sinful, and you're not willing to come to God in repentance, I want you to know that you're leaving your life wide open for demonic power to come and torment your life. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ came to set at liberty those that were oppressed by the enemy. Let me say this. There is a demonic world. And the work of all demons, it is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So if you find any area in your life where you are restless, where you are facing consistent sadness, where you are facing consistent struggles in particular areas of your life, I want you to know you need deliverance. And for some people, when we talk about the, the word deliverance, there is fear that comes into their hearts. 
because they think that well deliverance always has to do with someone screaming and someone kicking and someone having foam on their mouth not necessarily you can actually pray a prayer of deliverance and God delivers you even when you don't feel anything in the physical because it's not all about what you and I feel it is all about what we believe God is doing in our lives let me say this when you open a door into your life and a demon enters one when a demon enters it will not want to leave secondly when a demon enters and it's not expelled from you it's going to become i put it this way demons can sometimes want to have a generational work in someone's life and that's why you find some people that are struggling with the same struggles their parents had things like addiction alcohol smoking womanizing fornication uncontrollable anger all those works of the flesh can be fueled by a demon and if you're if you're not delivered you can pass that on to the next generation and that's why my friend i want to say if you're struggling in any area of your life you need the hand of god to touch your life and to set you free this was the mission of jesus christ and in all of the teachings of jesus christ in all of his preaching i want you to know he delivered people from bondages john 8 32 just cause himself is saying but you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free your deliverance begins by knowledge not only head knowledge many people know what the bible says but i'm talking about heart knowledge and the only way to turn your head knowledge of scriptures into a heart experience is when you accept jesus christ to be the lord and the savior of your life it's when you begin to read the word of god and then you begin to practice the word of god that's how truth can set anyone free from any type of bondage in their lives i want to conclude by saying what does it mean when someone needs deliverance i'll give you a couple of scriptures of people that came to jesus christ and they were delivered matthew 4 24 they brought to him all who were afflicted those suffering from various diseases and intense pains the demon possessed the epileptics and the paralytics and he healed them all matthew 8 16 and when evening came they brought to him many who were demon possessed he drove out the spirits with the word and he healed all who were sick he drove out the demons by the word oh praise god i want to make a prayer of faith for someone today if you feel like there is an area in your life where there is a bondage of the enemy a slavery an addiction some kind of fear and anxiety in your life put your hands in your chest because i want to pray for you and god will set you free and your freedom begins now in the name of jesus but the greatest of all deliverances is deliverance from the power of sin talking about accepting jesus to be the lord and the savior of your life if you want to be delivered from the power of unbelief and sin say these words after me lord jesus i thank you for the gift of life i know i am a sinner today i confess you as the lord and the savior of my life i am born again today father god i thank you so much for everyone in this service today and as they have confessed you as lord and as savior i speak your word let deliverance prevail in their lives in their families in their finances and in every area of their lives in jesus name we pray amen god bless you so much and i want you to know i'm praying for you if you want any more help or prayer please call